I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we're going back to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're going to talk about error handling in VBA. Now, VBA, as you know, is the programming language for Microsoft Office and can be used for a wide variety of purposes for automation. However, sometimes uh, we get errors in our code and we would like to handle those errors in an elegant way uh, so that our program doesn't hang or crash, but instead gives a nice message to the user about what happened. So without further ado, let's get to our error handling in VBA. Okay, so uh, to get started here, using the same file we've used for a couple other examples, here's a cities table that we're gonna open up. You can see it's got 23,000 records in it and uh, you know it's got all kinds of cities and countries and so what we're going to do is we're going to open that um, record set in VBA and then we're going to cause an error to happen uh, so that we can handle the error and demonstrate how to you know there's various ways to handle the error uh, based on the context so first I went to create and then new module and then I'll just save this module as our error. I'll just call it error, errors example or something. And then, uh, and then we can get started. So um, here's our module. We're gonna just code a simple subroutine and then we're gonna uh, show it working correctly and then we're gonna have an error and then we're gonna handle the error. So I'll call it open cities. Uh, to open our cities table and uh, there's our subroutine. So first I'll throw on a comment at the top. It's always good to leave a comment in your code to say what it does. That's not a very big comment but you get the idea. Um, and uh, we can indent our code over and, uh, and then we can start programming. So uh, the first thing we'll do is uh, we're going to make a variable for our record set uh, because programming in VBA in Microsoft Access is almost always using record sets for this or that. And uh, so we'll create a, an error message based off of handling record sets, which is something that is common that you will probably do in your code. So I'll set RST equal to uh, current DB .open record set, and then I'll just say cities. <clears throat> and then whenever I start a new record set, I always put the close at at the end before I start programming just so that I don't forget it um, because you should always close your record sets when you open them uh, leaving record sets open can lead to all kinds of problems um, and uh, so here I'm going to uh, go to the last record and then the first record and then what that does is it exposes all the records to the cursor there and uh, it, you can get the record count after you've moved to the last record uh, of the record set. And then what I'll do is I'll load that my my long integer, I'll load that with the rst.record count and uh, and then I'll, I'll debug.print the uh, records there. So if I just place my cursor in there and uh, hit the play button it's gonna run that subroutine and as you can see it opened uh, the record set, um, it got the record count for us, which is 23,018. And uh, that is a procedure that is running that has no errors. And uh, however, we do get errors uh, from time to time. Uh, you could have, uh, you know, a split database with, uh, you, know, you know, the back end on a file server and somebody took the network cable out by mistake, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, but in our case, what I'll do is I'll say I made a programming error and I put the wrong name in for cities. And so you can see if I try to run it after I put the wrong uh, table name in, uh, I get, you know, I get an error. And if I say debug, you know, it sort of stops there and the user might see this, which would be, you know, confusing for them and they don't really know what's happening. Um, so what we want to do is we want to have sort of an elegant way to handle that error. Uh, if it comes up. And uh, one of the rudimentary ways of doing it, which is not recommended for 
the whole procedure is to say on error resume next. Uh, however, that doesn't really solve anything, but I'll demonstrate it. And what it does is it just sort of skips over any lines that have errors. And so now it's giving zero records, which is wrong um, uh, because it got an error on that line, but it just skipped over it. And that's one way to handle um, an error, but it's not the best way. So you can see that the procedure did run. It ran all the way through. It just resumed next when it hit when it you know hit the spot with the error, but that led to a misleading output, which was zero records. And uh, so we're going to try uh, something different, which is to um, sort of handle our errors a little bit better. So when I run our procedure again and I pay attention to that error number, I can see that that's something that's happening uh, in our procedure and I might want to handle that. Now in this case we know that it's, you know, I just misspelled the cities, uh, but it could be something else like, you know, network problem. Um, and so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a block down here with a colon after it um, and that's going to create sort of a go-to in our, in our uh, procedure that we can go to whenever there's an error. And so the program logic or the program flow is going to jump to this spot um, that says sub error. You can call it anything you want. Sub error is just what I put there. And then when it jumps to that spot, there's a variable, system variable called error. That's E-R-R. -R, and uh, that's the number of the error that you saw, which was 3078. And so we can do something like a select case statement where we can say, hey, if you get this 3078 error, you know, tell the user something that they can understand that went wrong, um, and then you can do a case else, which is sort of like if anything else, if it was the number was anything else, then, uh, then you can output um, what the actual error was, and, you know, the user can sort of report that back to, you know, to admin. Um, so it basically allows you to um, to put a bunch of cases in there. You may actually have some steps in your in your case statement that might correct the error and you could actually return to different parts of the program. You could also say resume next. Uh, you could fix a problem and then say resume next. Uh, but in our case we're just going to give that one error uh, and we're going to say at the top jump to our, our sub error um, section uh, if you get, you know, if you run into an error, and so that's going to give us um, a little bit better than we had, though still not perfect. So now if I hit go, then uh, you can see it got the error that we that we uh, expected, and uh, we were able to give a message to the user that was something that was easy to understand. So from there, um, I could fix the name and we could get a different kind of error. Um, so I could put a couple of move nexts in here um, after we move to the last record. I think the first move next will, <clears throat> will give a zero error because we didn't handle that. So that's actually not an error. Um, we just didn't um, stop the program flow after we closed the record set. So moving to the next record um, after we move to the last record um, did allow it to move uh, to the next one, kind of like going to a new record, um, and uh, that was fine. Uh, however, if I add a second one, we're going to get a real error, which will, uh, which will be uh, no current record. So there you go. So the uh, 3021, no current record, um, that is a real error by going trying to do a move next after we went to the last record. Uh, we did two move next and the second one triggered a real error. Um, but if we do get that uh, going back to the zero error, if we want to handle that, uh, then uh, we should do the next step, which is, because um, we don't want to see that, uh, when our program finishes, we don't want it to go into the sub error, because uh, so we're just going to exit sub before our sub error. So this is the next thing that we're going to learn is, is how to do, how to exit the, the subroutine after you've handled the error. 
Um, so the most rudimentary way is if there's no error, you can put an exit sub in, just like you see there. Um, however, if you do get an error, then we're going to change our program flow um, so that um, so that we handle that properly. So in that case, it jumped to the uh, it jumped to the uh, error uh, block, um, but we want to handle things like closing the record set because uh, we don't want to leave record sets open. That can cause all kinds of problems. Um, and so we're going to add a couple more f um, steps to our error handling. We're going to cut that RST close and we're going to put it after our sub underscore exit, which is going to um, try to close the record set if there's some kind of error so that we don't leave record sets open. And this is particularly important if you if you have uh, ODBC connections, you know, link tables and things like that. Uh, you got to make sure to close your your uh, your tables. It's just good practice to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to say resume sub exit after our code jumped into the error. So it's basically after you give the you know the message to the user, go back to the sub exit and try to close that record set or do some other actions that you might want. Like we might we might leave a message. In this case, I'll I'll just do a debug dot print closed, um, so that you can see that when we run this, um, we get the error message as we expect, which was one that was that we didn't have a, you know, uh, we didn't we put it under case else. But when it was finished, it went back to the sub exit, and it, and it closed that record set and then it uh, gave us a message saying closed. Now notice that I did use the on error resume next inside the sub exit block there. That's a good place to use that one. And I'll run it and we get our error which is what we expected and you'll see now uh, it closed the record set after we got the error which is good because it's not going to leave connections open. And if I comment out the, the offending line and I run it, I do get uh, the expected result and I get the mer uh, the message closed. And that is how you do error handling in Visual Basic for applications in Microsoft Access. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on error handling in VBA. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet and click the bell when you see the bell and put any questions or comments in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.